North America's largest frogs can be found in most lakes and ponds throughout the eastern half of the continent. Though their calls are a quintessential part of our summer night soundtrack, perhaps we don't take enough time to appreciate these impressive animals. I don't know how well you can see it with the light on me here, but this big critter is a bullfrog. And this is North America's largest frog. This is a male. You can see he's got that beautiful yellow throat. And I was just walking out here on this dock at night and they're calling all around me. Looked down, there's one sitting right next to the dock. And so I put the spotlight on him and grabbed him. Just wanted to get you a closer look at this beautiful big frog. They are really impressive. And uh, bullfrogs, you can tell the difference between a bullfrog and a green frog because green frogs have these little ridges down their back that we call a dorsolateral fold, and bullfrogs don't have them. And aside from seeing that big yellow throat on this male, you can also tell this male, its tympanum, or its eardrum, is much, much larger than its eye. And it's also got these, these big thumb uh, with which they can grab the female. But bullfrogs are interesting, and green frogs as well, because unlike a lot of the other frogs here in uh, eastern North America that come out and they breed in the early spring for a fairly short time, bullfrogs and green frogs actually defend territories and call all throughout much of the summer. So they have one of the longest breeding seasons of any of the frogs here in this area. It's not hard to see how the bullfrog got its name when you hear its low-frequency bellowing call. <coughs> In contrast, the very short, abrupt call of a green frog is often likened to the pluck of a loose banjo string. These calls can be heard both day and night throughout the summer as male frogs try to attract mates and establish territories. In this way, frog calls function much the same as bird songs. When frogs call, they move air from their lungs into air sacs in their throat, which act as resonance chambers and then push the air back into their lungs from there. This circulation of air from lungs to air sacs is why many calls have such rhythmic qualities. Despite spending so much of their time in the water and being so well adapted for an aquatic lifestyle, these frogs frequently move over land and are excellent jumpers. Though insects do make up a lot of the diet of both green frogs and bullfrogs, their size means that they're able to take on even larger prey, including things like mammals, birds, or even other frogs. Bullfrog and green frog tadpoles are almost as voracious as the adults. Though they often graze on algae, these tadpoles will readily eat the eggs and larvae of other amphibians. These tadpoles can take one or two years to mature, meaning they can only inhabit permanent waters. However, these waters are nearly always inhabited by fish, which are such effective predators on amphibian larvae and eggs that many frog species won't even attempt to breed in water where fish are present. But here too, these frogs prove formidable, as their tadpoles have skin secretions that make them distasteful to most fish, allowing them to thrive even in large rivers. Sadly, this adaptability has allowed bullfrogs to become established as an invasive species throughout much of western North America. In fact, the American bullfrog is fast becoming a global problem. But the destruction bullfrogs can cause outside their native environment isn't their fault. They're just doing what bullfrogs do best, survive and reproduce. It's humans that have spread these frogs across the globe. Though the frogs may be introduced when large tadpoles used as bait for fishing are released, much of the spread can be attributed to commercial frog farming. With their large size and rapid reproduction, bullfrogs are one of the best sources for frog legs and are actually harvested throughout North America as a game species. 
American bullfrogs may be common in their native range and invasive globally, but in my mind, this only reinforces what adaptable and amazing animals they are.